California is known for its gorgeous weather, beautiful coastlines, national parks, and tourist attractions. However, Thanksgiving 1991 in Costa Mesa, Orange County, when most families were indulging in large amounts of food such as turkey, mashed potatoes smothered in gravy, green beans and other vegetables, Omaima Nelson was indulging in a perfectly prepared, well-seasoned rack of ribs. The ribs of her husband, Bill Nelson. Omaima Ari was born in 1968 in a poor village in Egypt near the border of Sudan. Her upbringing was filled with torture from someone who was supposed to love and care for her, her father. Instead, he physically and sexually abused her and her mother. She was also subjected to female genital mutilation, which is when the genitals of a girl are deliberately cut and usually takes place before the girl hits puberty. It is a very painful and dangerous procedure, which makes intercourse painful and traumatic for women. It can also cause difficulty during labour, and childbirth can be life-threatening for both the mother and her baby. Some girls even die as a direct result of FGM due to blood loss or infection. It is a practice that should be outlawed. Amima's mother eventually built up the courage to leave her abusive husband and move to a slum in Cairo called the City of the Dead, where the residents literally live amongst the graves. In 1986, aged 18, Omaima met an American oil worker and the two started a sexual relationship. Her mother insisted they got married as now that she was no longer a virgin, no Muslim man would want her. Omaima saw this as a way out of poverty and agreed to marry him. After tying the knot, her husband took Omaima to his home in Texas. However, their marriage quickly fell apart. Omaima, still only 18, was now alone in an unfamiliar country. She didn't speak English well and had no money. However, Amima understood the power of her beauty and knew how to use it to her advantage. With this being one of her only options, she turns to meeting men in bars for some stability. She has many short relationships. She would spend their money freely and when she got tired of them, she would rob them and disappear. She eventually moved to Costa Mesa, Orange County, California. It is reported that the cost of living in Orange County is 52% higher than the normal national average and Omaima had no money. However, she managed to find work cleaning houses. She worked as a nanny and her stunning looks also landed her some modeling work. However, Omaima didn't enjoy cleaning houses and soon went back to meeting specifically older men in bars. This is where she met Bill Nelson. In the fall of 1991, Omaima, now 23, met 56-year-old Bill Nelson. Bill had history with the law. He was once a pilot. However, in 1984, he was convicted for smuggling marijuana and served four years in federal prison. Bill was described as having a very vibrant personality. He had five children, 17 grandchildren, and was also quite wealthy. Bill was exactly what Amima was looking for. She knew Bill could provide the security she craved. The two hit it off immediately and were so infatuated with one another that after only three weeks, they drove to Phoenix and got married. However, what Amima didn't know was Bill was still legally married. After the wedding, they took their honeymoon, which was a road trip to Texas and Arkansas where Bill introduced Amima to his family. His family were wary to say the least, as she, now their stepmom, was younger than some of his children. 
while riding horses at the family ranch, the horse she was riding threw her. They asked her if she needed medical attention. She refused and said she just needed aspirin and vodka, which seemed to impress some of the family. After the road trip, the couple returned to California and set up home in Bill's apartment. On Thanksgiving Day, Bill phoned his daughter to tell her about their great Thanksgiving feast and how much he was enjoying his day. He invited his daughter over, but she declined the offer. That was the last conversation she was to have with her father. On the 1st of December 1991, a man by the name of Jose Esquivel was awakened by someone banging loudly on his door. He looked outside and saw a red Corvette parked outside. He didn't recognise the car, so he didn't answer the door. After a while, the visitor went away. However, a few hours later, the person returned banging on his door. This time, he opened the door and saw a mimer, whom he had dated briefly over a year ago. Omaima was crying. She had cuts on her face and hand and she told Jose that her husband had raped, beat and forced her into days of bondage so she had to kill him in self-defence. She told him that she had cut up his body and put him into trash bags and needed a truck to dispose of his remains. Omaima offered Jose $75,000 and two motorbikes to help her get rid of the body. Jose was shocked, but played it cool. He told her to wait while he got his truck. However, Jose called 911. The police arrived minutes later and found Omaima in the red Corvette. The police noticed some trash bags on the passenger seat. When the officer looked inside, he saw what looked like human organs. He questioned a mimer who said the organs were from someone Bill had killed. The police got a warrant and searched the apartment where they found multiple suitcases with trash bags inside. Inside the trash bags were human remains. Police also found a broken lamp and an iron covered in blood. They also found a mattress in the bedroom which was soaked in blood and in the bathroom they found a skinned, gutted human torso which was hung over the bath with clothes hangers. However, the worst was yet to come. As they searched the kitchen, they found a deep fat fryer with two human hands floating in oil that had been fried and mixed with turkey meat. In the trash, they found pieces of human flesh with turkey and cranberry sauce. More body parts were found in the freezer. Behind a bag of peas wrapped in foil was Bill's head, which Omaima had cooked in the deep fat fryer. Omaima was arrested and taken to the police station. She changed her story several times and acted as if Bill was still alive. However, the police put an end to that story when they informed her they found Bill's head in the freezer. She then claimed an ancient Egyptian demon had instructed her to kill her husband and destroy the body as once the body was destroyed, he would not be able to get to the afterlife. She claimed Bill was abusive and had forced himself on her and she killed him in self-defence. But when she was examined at the hospital, there was no evidence of sexual trauma. The cuts on her face were not defensive wounds, but were wounds consistent with injuries sustained while cutting up the body. The medical examiner discovered that not only had Omaima decapitated, dismembered and disemboweled Bill, but she had also castrated him. The cause of death was determined to be multiple blunt force injuries to his skull, which were consistent with being hit with the lamp and the iron found at the scene. There were also rings of bruises around the ankles of Bill's remains, which suggested he may have been the one tied up. 
the investigators theorised that Bill had entered a consensual bonded session with Omaima. She had tied him up as she had done with her exes in the past and probably demanded some type of money or access to his wealth. She may have also found out that she was not legally his wife and launched into a frenzied attack, beating him brutally with a lamp, then the iron, and finally stabbing him with a pair of scissors before dismembering his corpse. According to the medical examiner, the body had been cut up with such precision, the coroner's office wondered if she had done this before. But what was even more disturbing was the fact that a hundred pounds of Bill's remains were missing. A neighbour said they heard the garbage disposal running for the whole weekend until it broke. It was reported a psychiatrist testified that Omaima said she had put on red shoes, a red hat and red lipstick before she chopped and cooked parts of her husband's body. She said she had prepared his ribs like in a restaurant and said it was so sweet that nothing was sweeter than her husband's meat. She later recanted the statement and denied eating any parts of her husband. In December 1992, Omaima stood trial for the murder and dismemberment of Bill Nelson. Robert Hansen, another of Omaima's brief flings, also testified in court to her tying him up during a sex act but then demanding money at gunpoint. Omaima's defence was that she suffered from PTSD which stemmed from her abusive childhood and that Bill had physically forced himself on her multiple times during their four-week marriage. She claimed she had taken his life after he had tied her up and forced himself on her. She testified that she had got one arm loose, grabbed the lamp and hit him over the head with it, then stabbed him with the scissors in order to save her life. However, she claimed to have no memory of dismembering him. Omaima also claimed that an ancient Egyptian demon told her to cut up his body because they believe that if a body is scattered, they will not go to the afterlife. In January 1993, she was found guilty of second degree murder as well as the assault on Robert Hansen. Omaima was sentenced to 28 years to life in prison. Whilst in prison, Omaima began a long-distance relationship with a very wealthy disabled man in his 70s. They married, however he soon passed away, leaving Omaima with a lot of money. Omaima has been a problematic inmate. She has refused to take any classes regarding her rehabilitation. Contraband has been found in her cell many times and she has gotten into physical altercations with her inmates and correctional officers. Omaima first became eligible for parole in 2006, but was denied, as she was found to be too unpredictable. She was again denied parole in 2011, as the parole board said she still had not taken responsibility for the murder. She will be eligible for parole again in 20. 26. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe and I will see you in another video.